Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got almost all the usual suspects, minus a couple people, but we've got Dude Buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How's it going, Mark? It's great. It's great. Uh, we've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I'm surprised no one has commented on your glasses yet. Uh, you've got 3D <laughs> glasses on for anybody that can see this video. Um, it's a little bit obnoxious, but it is what it is. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Well, mm. I'm, I'm glad that you're you're liking my filter because I will be changing it up all throughout the uh, the podcast just to keep you on your toes. So um, last but not least, you know him, you love him. The the professor, the brain, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I, I'm not feeling well right now. Why? What's wrong? These these annoying filters are bugging me. Really? Like I'm totally Team Eric on this one. Like I can't. <laughs> like we're gonna we're gonna have to <laughs> we're either gonna have to like hide your picture. Like Eric's working right now to hide your video. Like to shut it off. We can't even do this. We can't even like. I don't even want to stop talking because this is like a filibuster. If I stop talking, then the video will switch over to you and I can't, I can't even like, I'm going to have to shut off my skin. So this is a filibuster. I now turn over my time to Eric Peterson. <laughs> Go start talking. Start, Why don't boss, you introduce our topic? Just let's, let's get going. Let's get going. All right. Okay. Here's the topic. See, we're shutting Mark out. We're just going to do that Mark. He, we're just going to over talk him. Eric. Here's the today's topic. Ready? Is it acceptable to take, or would you take a credit card for a cash payment for a cash sale, right? Like someone wants to buy the property in whole from you. Pick the number, 10,000, 3,000, 1,000, 10,000, $20,000. Would you take the payment on a credit card? What do you say? So oh, wait, wait, before you go, let's, let's go to Mimi. I can't even go to Mark. Like I was hoping Mark would take it, but like, Mark's just being ridiculous. Mimi, what do you think? Yes, I've done it, but I did have a guy come back and, um, and, uh, what do you call it? Contest the charge with his credit card company. And what so was? I had to give, I, yeah, I had to give back three monthly payments, but he'd paid me for a year and a half before he defaulted. So, and you know, I didn't even bother to try to um, dispute the, you know, react to the claim because I was concerned that they wouldn't like the type of business I was in. It was a couple hundred bucks. I let it go. But otherwise I take debit credit, debit credit or bank ACH, uh, Facebook, PayPal. I mean, it, any, I think anything but what checks, about on a cap? What about a cash sale? Like yes. not term sale, cash yes. sale. Done it. You, done it. Done it. Done it. I just have to include, make sure I in include uh, merchant service fees because, you know, if it's five grand, that's a big chunk of change to have to pay the merchant service fees on that. So I charge them extra to pay for that. But yes, is it illegal? I probably. I don't think it's illegal. But what, what do you, okay, Boston, what do you think? All right. So uh, for, for us, uh, we've done like $1,000 $1, deals and less uh, on a credit card. For more expensive deals, we prefer that they wire it to our account. So we, we, we have people wire us the money. As soon as that wire hits the bank account, we're recording the deed. They, they can't contest that, right? Once it's out of their account, it's out of their account. Uh, the, the bank person, the teller has to screen them. You know, are you, are you sending this money under any duress? Uh, no. So that money's coming to me. It's not going away. No one can contest it. That's how we do cash deals. All right. Peterson, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, we will take a credit card payment or uh, a cash purchase. Um, I do kind of have some 
I guess, limits in my mind of, of what I'm looking for. If it's probably less than about three grand, I'll do it. If it's going to be more than that, I would rather collect a deposit and, uh, you know, have them send a cashier's check or wire the rest of the money because, you know, in the end, um, I don't want to risk losing my Stripe account or my credit card processor account over a large transaction that caused them to, to look at my account further. So if I feel like it's within the normal confines of the type of payments I collect in that account normally, I'm okay with it. But if it's far outside of that, and especially if my account is brand new, um, I'm gonna be overly cautious in collecting that kind of a, a large sum. Um, but I'm not concerned for anything else other than just the potential of losing my, my credit card processor. Yeah. Mark, what do you think? So first of all, I really did my best while all of you were talking to distract you and no one took it. I mean, it was like video filter after video filter. That being said, it is a serious question and I'm going to seriously answer it despite the 3d glasses. So in my experience, it's okay if someone wants to pay cash for a, or, you know, like use their credit card to pay for a cash transaction. Now, as Mimi alluded to, if they're going to pay monthly via credit card, that's no bueno. That is really not good. And that's why we created geek pay, but you want to get those monthly transactions via ACH. So that's the first piece. Now, the second piece is what Eric said. If the cash transaction is outside of the limits, when we first set up our, um, our banking relationship with the credit card company, because they're going to ask you, what's your average transaction? What's on the low end? What's on the high end? And let's say $10,000 on the, is on the high end and they want to pay $20,000 on a credit card. Well, like Eric said, the most I would take is $10,000 on the credit card and have them wire or send a check for the balance or they can make that second payment the next month of $10,000. Now, when does fraud come in? Like what Mimi alluded to on a chargeback. So we've got a land contract. We have a promissory note. We have a purchase sale agreement or, and that's on a, on a terms deal, but because I won't do terms deals with credit cards, that's irrelevant. And I know I'm speaking a lot, Scott Todd. So if you want to interrupt me, you can. I feel, I'm already sick of my own voice. No, go ahead. Okay. So in this case, let's say, let's just pretend Mimi's my buyer. And she's like, Mark, I love that Colorado property. I'm going to pay you $5,000 cash. I want to get the cash, cash discount. It's within my uh, limit for my credit card. I think, okay, great. Now, 120 days later, Mimi just disputes the transaction. And I have deeded her the property she's going to lose because she currently owns the property. And that has happened to us in the past. So no, no problem there. The only way that she could defraud me because this has happened to me, if she calls me up and using, you know, her very sweet, innocent voice says, Oh, Mark, I went out to the property. I really didn't like it, but you know what? I changed credit cards. Would you mind just sending me a check for the 5,000? I'd really appreciate it. And I think, oh, such a sweet voice. I'll write Mimi a check, 5,000, we'll be good. Not a problem, right? And then she's gonna go ahead and, I haven't even deeded her the property yet in this, in this example. Well, it turns out Mimi stole the credit card and now she's just gotten my $5,000. So anytime that there's a refund, on a credit card, you have to refund in the way that they paid, which would be back on the credit card. Eric, why are you shaking your head? I can't believe Mimi would do that to you. Well, that's just an example. I don't think oh. Mimi would ever do it to me. Yeah, I mean, a realistic example would be like Bossman, because that's something he would do, right? I thought he's already done that to you. Oh, well, Bossman, did you try to do that to me back in the day? Bueno, 
You might have. Yeah. No, I'm, you know, obviously I'm just joking because the only person in this group that I'm truly upset with based on any kind of land transactions is Eric Peterson. We all know that story. Yes, we do. Uh, okay. All right. So, I mean, like it's a very relevant topic, right? Because people, people can't imagine that, that we would actually sell real estate on a credit card. And the, the thing about land that's really, really cool is oftentimes, and you guys hit on it, like Eric, I think you said your number was 3000, Boston was a thousand. Like oftentimes we can sell, I call them singles, right? Like they're not home runs. They're not huge transactions. There's a lot of singles that take place. 1000 2000 $3,000 sales. That's like a, that's like people buying something like, like, I don't know, what, what can you buy for a couple thousand dollars? People do it all the time. You know, they go into a trans furniture, for example, they go in, they buy some furniture, they spend $3,000 and bam, they're off to the races. It's, it's, it is that low level. And what's cool about it to me is that you can actually do this and sell real estate with a credit card and bam, next thing you know, you're, you're moving at the speed of sound. So I think you got some good advice there. Mark, what do you think? No, I, I, I agree. Um, I can't, I can't even, I can't, I wish that people could see this. Like I know that this is being recorded. This is I know they'll be able to go to YouTube and look at it, but like, you want to talk about distraction? Oh man. I think the, the tip of the week is to not use the new zoom, uh, mask is, filters. You got to be the tip of the week, right? Like I think we're over with it, right? One, two, three, left freedom ring. Are we like, that's it. Like <laughs> what else is there to go? I mean, if you just want to annoy people, I mean, Mark must just want to annoy us today. I don't know. I, I really woke up today and I was, you know, and I thought, well, what would be the best way to annoy Scott Todd? I'm like video filters. I think you found it. I think you I found did. a big pet peeve of mine. I don't know. Yeah. So you watch um, people are going to start doing this to me now. No, but I you know no, I, it is a really good topic. And I think what Mimi brought up is really important. You don't want to finance the land via credit card. And I thought what Eric brought up was really important as well. You don't want to take such a large transaction. It's going to get flagged if it's outside of those setup limits. And then um, what everybody else, you know, the Scots brought up, I really wasn't listening because I was playing with video filters, but I'm sure if I were, it was really important information. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, there it is. I, I can't wait until we have something like serious going on. I don't know, like something serious and you really need to concentrate. And I'm just going to start like, I don't know, maybe I'll hire some like ballerinas or something to come in here and start dancing in front of my camera. I don't know, something that is just like, or maybe like monkeys or something. I don't know. Like during boot camp, we'll just be constantly raising our hands on the Zoom call. Yeah. 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 But I'd be curious though. How often is this an issue where somebody does a chargeback on the down payment or on a big cash payment? Um, Eric Peterson, in all the years you've been doing this, how often has that actually occurred? I don't think it's ever occurred for me. Okay. Scott oh. Bossman? I think it's occurred three times on uh, down payments. Right, Mimi? For me. Just that one time. Just the one time. Scott Todd? Um, I actually had it happen one time and uh, what happened was the, the, um, the, the guy's wife, the guy who bought the land, his wife didn't know what happened. She saw the charge on the credit card and she immediately fired up the dispute machine without like even talking to him. So she immediately fires it up. And uh, then I called him, I'm like, yo, dude, what's going on? He's like, yeah, and we'd already transferred the deed and everything. And I just said, like, what gifts? And he called the credit card company back and told them that they took the money out. He called the credit card company back and said, hey, uh, we figured out what it is. Please cancel the charge. And then about 10 days later, the money came back to me. So it's the way that it is. Yeah, I, I will say, though, that of all businesses, this one is pretty much fraud proof of any business you can think of. Because we're not dealing with any physical we have a contract in place that's been recorded with a government entity. So when they do dispute, they're going to lose despite 
the fact that the credit card company's knee-jerk reaction is to take the money out of your account. But all you have to do is submit your proof and then they take it and you win the dispute and it's not that big a deal. Um, that being said, in the 20 years that I've been land investing, this has happened to me. I was defrauded once, so I learned from that, uh, that, <laughs> that mistake. And then um, I believe that I've only had one person dispute a charge, which uh, was a cash transaction. We deeded the property. They simply forgot about it. And it wasn't an issue because once we submitted the proof, they're like, oh yeah, I do own that property. So, you know, sometimes people just, they get busy, um, you know, kind of like with Eric Peterson and music, just, you know, he's buying music left and right and, you know, and guitars and he just probably forgets. Like, oh yeah, I did, I did buy that, you know, Led Zeppelin platinum album whatever it is. Yeah, he got the new Taylor Swift album. Boy. Eric, are you going to take that? <laughs> I don't even know hey, how to respond. I listen to I guess it. I it's have not a bad. Me. So I think it was a really important topic, even though we kind of went through it very quickly and for myself in a very silly way. Um, yeah, the topic I think is important. Hopefully people are really going to get value from that. But speaking of value, as is the round table tradition, usually we pick on Mimi for the tip of the week. But this week, we're going to the technician, Eric Peterson, for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But let me interrupt you before you give that answer. And just remind the listeners that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. It is the best passive income model. What's great about Flight School is that it's free education, guaranteed, because you're going to make back your tuition investment in 180 days or less guaranteed. All you have to do is show us the work. It's that simple. And what's even better is Scott Todd is taking you up that mountain of land investing over 16 weeks. You couldn't have a better Sherpa. How do you get more information? Easy. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. The landgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, Eric Peterson, what is your tip of the week? All right. So I have a website, a web app for us to, to take a look at today. It's geckoboard.com. That's uh, gecko, like the little green guy that uh, you see in TV commercials. And the word board.com. And uh, it's basically a, a dashboard uh, visualization type tool where you can connect, a, let's say, a Google spreadsheet with data in it and uh and create some visualization around that so you know i was thinking we we talk to our coaching students a lot about tracking their metrics and um you know knowing their numbers uh this is a a good resource it's free um there are paid versions but it is free to start and you can create some nice visualizations with your data and uh it could help you interpret it a little bit uh, more quickly. Oh, pretty geeky. Mimi, what do you think? I think that's super cool. Hmm. I'll, I'll always uh, trying to find ways to make data easily absorbable into information, right? Yeah. Uh, Scott Boston, what about you? Yeah, I like it. Give it, give it, give it a try. And it's free. It's all can't, be, can't be free. No, um, the only thing that beats free is easy, according to Steve Jobs. Um, rest in peace, Steve Jobs. Uh, Scott Todd, how about you? I'll reserve judgment until after I take a look at it. <laughs> yes, and that is the proper answer. With any Eric Peterson tip, actually. Well, I think it's the. I I honestly think that it's the uh, the proper answer with anything because how many times have someone said to you like, oh man, 
I'm sitting there and I've spent all this time creating something in like Airtable, but like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be creating. Well, nothing. You don't create anything in Airtable until you have a problem and you know that Airtable will provide you with a solution. So have the problem first and then go seek the solution. Don't have the solution first and then go seek the problem. Exactly. Just saying. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Eric, are you using this? I am not using it. Um, I came across it actually today before our podcast and uh, I am using um, Google Studio or Google Data Studio, which is a similar, it's a little more complicated to use and uh, but same type of thing where you can kind of visualize data. Um, but this one caught my eye and I thought it was worth telling people about. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them that the only way we're going to be able to convince Eric even to do any more tips of the week is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. So please do that. And hopefully everyone's getting a lot of value. And by the time everyone's listening to this podcast, we would already have completed our first virtual boot camp, which I'm really excited about. I don't know about you guys. Mimi, are you ready? I'm ready. You know me, I love boot camp. I can't wait. And I'm really interested to see how the whole online boot camp goes. Yeah, it's it's going to be really really interesting and hopefully fun and cool and um it'll be cool it's Scott not Austin. what i prefer but since i've got crutches it, it you know i couldn't have gone it would have been hard for me to do a boot camp in person anyway so it works out for me sorry go ahead Scott. yeah Scott bossman are you ready i am ready uh just no video filters please but uh yeah, I'm very ready for boot camp. Excited. Okay, Scott Todd. I'm ready to go, man. Like I'm gonna miss. Uh, I'm gonna miss be, like being there live in person. But ah, what can we do? This is it. Well, yeah, and you know, um, I'm gonna be safe. I'm definitely gonna be video filtering the entire time, even though Bossman doesn't want me to, because. Let's face it, it's it's kind of cool. Right, Eric Peterson? No. So <laughs> so we're all agreed, no video filters during boot camp. Absolutely correct. correct. We agree, Period. no video filters. How about background? The Star Wars background. That one's terrible. That, yeah. that movie thing it's is like... terrible. <laughs> so no backgrounds? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think you want to reduce any, uh, you want people listening, Mark. You don't want people, uh, like concentrating on something else, right? Like it's going to be hard enough to listen for, for the whole time, let alone like now we introduce like filters and background and movement and, oh, it's like, oh, look at that. What's that? What's the, what's behind them? Where, where is he? Where's that picture taken from? Is that real? Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, are we are we gonna do this together then? Since one. you took off the filters, yes. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. Ring. Pretty good. That was really good. Okay. I, I, we're definitely ready for boot camp, for sure. Um, Scott Bossman, not to put you on the spot, but you know. To Scott Todd's point, because it is virtual and it is going to be hard to keep people's attention, what about like you singing during like breaks or, you know, at some point? Yeah. That's funny. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're, I think, you're uh, good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But um, usually there's only singing on nightcap. So maybe we are going to have a nightcap or two. So maybe. Maybe a song will be sung. All right. Push people toward um, that event. Yeah, we got to get Aileen to Augustine back on. Yeah. You know, 
little 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 musical uh, entertainment. All right, well, great. So it's uh, it's ninety five degrees here, which means Ooh. like we're like cold. I'm putting on a jacket. Yeah, it's usually like one twenty. It's really it's really nice actually so after after colorado you know any any respite from the heat i'll, I'll take it definitely made me soft for sure yeah mimi did you get hit by that storm yeah well we were in st john at the time right wednesday night of our week vacation we were up all night long all all night long because the windows and the doors were whistling because of the wind and just bang 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 all oh. but uh it was exciting cool you know those houses are built for us so yeah scott todd you weren't hit at all were you no no all right cool well the midwest guys i know weren't hit at all so all right well this is fun I'll, I'll see everybody uh next week no filters i promise well come on one filter like at some point we'll see you as friday. long as we don't see it not even next week we're gonna see you friday oh that's right that's right. You can you can yeah, use Friday. your filters in your next meeting with Tate and Mike Zeno because they haven't seen them yet, but we've all seen them, so we're good. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, see everybody on Friday. Here comes right. boot camp. Ready or not. Here we come. Yeah. <laughs>